Welcome to Engaging and Empowering School Libraries, a podcast that aims to raise the profile of school libraries by talking about topics that are current across education and teaching. We decided tonight that we'd like to talk about book clubs on this podcast due to the fact that we had heard that the Blue Peter Book Club was being launched um, on the 9th of September. There was and probably still is such much excitement around being able to get your hands on a Blue Peter badge created by Sir Quentin Blake. Unfortunately for those of us who would love to get our hands on such a coveted Blue Peter badge, they are only available for children between the ages of 5 and 15. Yes, I did check. So tonight we're joined by Lou Morrish, um, secondary school librarian and author, Sally Hamilton, a uh, primary school librarian and this year's winner of Primary School Librarian of the Year. And I'm joined as usual with my co-hosts, school librarians, Ruth Maloney and Sabrina Cox. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me. So before we get to our first serious question, I think it's probably a good thing to talk about what we understand by a book club. So I'm going to start with Sally. Um, do you have one and how do they run in your school? Um, hi, Elizabeth. Thank you. Yeah, we do run um, a book group. Um, it's actually called Books at Breakfast. We start at eight o'clock in the morning with our book group and right. it's a group of specially invited children. It's it's made up um, of our pupil premium children in year six. And then once that's finished, then we in the spring, then we go on and we offer that out to the year five pupil premium children. Fantastic. Can you just explain pupil premium for anybody? Yeah, those are the children, I mean, you, people might say um, free school meals. It's those children for whom we are in receipt of a sum of money for whatever circumstances for those children. So there are various initiatives that we do for those children. Um, and yeah, that's one of them. So, so is, the, is the book club set for those children in particular because... Um, because they're able to, you're able to provide them something before school as well as. Yeah, so the, the idea is they're getting a good breakfast to set them up for the day. It's yeah. going to have a positive impact on attendance for the day. And also then we're exposing them to new books, new authors, new genres. We're currently um, reading the Information Book Awards shortlisted books that we're doing nonfiction this half term. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so, uh, Lou, can I ask you the same thing? Do you have a book club and how do they run in your school? Yes, we do. We do have a book club. They're called the Ink Drinkers. Oh. We, <laughs> we don't advocate drinking ink. I do say that to each <laughs> of the new cohorts. Please don't drink ink. It's poisonous. <laughs> um, but they're called the Ink Drinkers and it's open to all pupils in the school. But we generally have year seven, eights and nines. There's no um, criteria apart from the fact that they must love reading. Um, but I don't look at any kind of scores or anything. There's no pupil premium information there. They just come and join if they want. And we meet at lunch times and we have a strange split lunch at our school. So half the school goes on lunch at one point and another half goes on another part of the day. So I have two book clubs effectively every lunchtime oh. um, of different age children. And um, yeah, there's too many children that want to join basically. So it's, uh, yeah, it's busy. It's fa that's fantastic. I'm going to bring in my co-hosts. Ruth, do you have book club that you're ru that's running? Um, yeah, I'm rather a book club heavy this year we've managed to get five book clubs running wow. um our sixth form have to do something called community you know, creativity activity and service and as part of that they often get involved with the library and so they are running we follow local book awards and so we've got two clubs following that award so they're being run by the sixth form I'm running a 10 minute reads book club with one of the English department. Another group of sixth formers said they wanted to run something just for the very, very keen readers to try and get them to uh, read things that they haven't come across before perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then we heard about the Blue Peter Award and some of our year 12s went, oh, we have to do the Blue Peter Award. So then we had a fifth book club. So we are absolutely book clubbed to the hilt. Um, <laughs> yeah, if it, you know, if it could be read about, we're reading about it, basically. So a good, so a good topic for you this evening, then. Yeah, I'm all over it. Yeah. <laughs> and Sabrina, can't miss you out. Have you got book club? Oh, book club, your life's changed. 
Yeah, well, I used to run a book club fortnightly one for my year sevens to nines. Um, but my world has kind of changed and I've shifted to being a bookseller. So part of my role now is to encourage young children to be reading. So I've been exposing them to books that have been part of book clubs, lists and that. Um, so that's so kind of so where I've moved to now. Absolutely. So a completely different take on it. So so I hope you'll you'll um include your thoughts in a lot of this discussion tonight, Sabrina. Um, so let's start with the, the first question. What do we think the benefits are of, for students attending a book club? Can I go to Lou first for that one? Uh, yeah, I had a bit of a think about this. Uh, and there's loads of good reasons for joining a book club, aren't there? But I think for me, what I feel the children get out of it is a feeling of belonging to something. I really do feel that they are part of a group and they may not know each other very well, certainly not to start with, but friendships definitely blossom and just feeling part of something. Sometimes a lot of the children that join our book clubs are, I hate to use the word friendless, but really struggle to find friendships and don't feel they're a part of a group. They don't part of, you know, you know what it's like at school. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. a harsh environment. So a book club is just a legitimate reason to come together with like-minded people in a safe environment. Um, yeah, just that belonging, I would say. Is Absolutely. A big... it, it, it's a good one. Um, let me let me bring Sally in. What do you think of, yeah. of the benefits? Um, I agree with, with Lou, um, with what she said there about that sense of belonging. But our, our group is invited rather than we open that all to everybody um and it's quite lovely to see the children realize that <clears throat> excuse me reading is kind of a collaborative practice it's not something that's done in isolation it's not something done that we, we're doing academically um and that's quite a joy actually for them to to realize that it is something you can kick your shoes off and sit back and, and really chill out with that and there um yeah it's just giving them that sense that it's a social activity for us Absolutely. the Absolutely. emphasis is very much on reading for pleasure and, and it's important isn't it in a book club it's that opportunity actually to to talk about what you're reading yeah. and I know as an adult I've, I've often um if I've if I've read something that somebody else has encouraged me to read rather than something I've picked up myself there's a little bit of um a push to continue reading it even if you're not particularly enjoying it because you know you're going to talk about it afterwards but there's that element of realizing you enjoyed it more than you thought you did but exactly once that. you start discussing it do you and find that with do you find that with children I do and that's what's happening with these um information books that we're reading at the moment for the awards I I could see when I said we're going to be judging these awards and this is what we're going to be looking at and got the four short listed books ready for them but actually they're really bouncing ideas off off one another they've got the pack that um school library association have provided and they're working their way through it and really considering each book and some of them will work in pairs some are working in groups of four next week we're going to shake it up a bit they don't know that yet but i'm going to put them in different groups and just see if we what kind of responses we get um so yeah it's different in that they're it's not a lunchtime club that they choose to come to they've been invited but they're all happy to come and they're all getting something from it for sure yeah uh ruth let me bring you back in yeah i think for, for us there's definitely something in both of those things it's a combination of finding your group of people and interestingly enough I'm involved in our um, assembly that we're running for anti-bullying week in the school and instead of doing a this is what bullying is and how terrible it is what we're doing is a find your tribe exercise so we've invited various groups along so we're a secondary school so we've got the what GSA which is what we call LGBT those people got diversity people we've got book club people we've got the well-being craft club and it's exactly that it's about which of these groups of people might you feel comfortable to be with and part of that comfort is I think that discussion it's can you learn to disagree about the books can you discuss these things that you know 
there's that sort of tension at the beginning or oh, the teachers here or there's a say, you know sixth form is in the room we've got to be really polite and then something sets off somebody a book that they really loved or a book somebody really didn't like and you get those brilliant conversations going where suddenly the kids are able to express completely freely because it's not assessed it's not a classroom environment I and I love watching that you know the the and it's often as you say Lou it's the the kids who are, haven't found their tribe the kids who maybe are less confident but in that environment they can speak up and it's brilliant it's lovely for that so so our next question is about is about how we manage our book clubs so generally speaking if if um we've got a group of students we've we generally want to, them to read the same book. Um, and sometimes that this isn't financially possible for schools. So so do schools, how does that work? Do 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 you buy multiple copies? Do you get them to, uh, like Sally, you were talking about the, the non-fiction book award. So that's different, that's different books. That's not everybody, but do you have multiple copies of them? I suppose is the question. Um, we've just got one copy of each and it's a group of 12 that I'm working with. So wow. four little groups each, and then we rotate the books each week for this. In the past, this time last year, we did um, a book where we each had, if it wasn't a copy each, it was one between two. Um, and we bought that with, because it's a pupil premium group that I'm working with, we bought that out of pupil premium funding. Okay, um, so it's, so do you find it easier if it's with non-fiction to be able to do that? Because you can probably keep the book in school for them to yes, use in the in exactly. the club. And then once we've submitted our votes to the School Library Association, those books will be going out into the library ready for non-fiction November. That's what we're building to this time. And then Absolutely. next half term, I'll pick another book and try and get one that we've got multiple copies of so that we at least have one between two. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, we, what we do with our pupil premium children, we give them a book every half term. They get, have a book to keep. So I'll often, if we have read the first three chapters of a particular book or first four chapters over the course of a half term, I'll give them the opportunity to order their own copy in to keep um, if they want to continue okay. reading it. Okay, that's great because you've got them hooked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or if they if we finish that one, they might want the sequel. They can go on and order that one. Yeah. So Lou, uh, how does it work with you? Is it is it individual copies? Is it is it multiple copies? Uh, how do you work your book clubs? Well, we have last year certainly I have, don't have final numbers on this year's club but uh we had nearly 60 members oh wow so we're talking big numbers here there's no yeah. way I could have one single book for all 60 members unfortunately oh. yeah so how that worked was we for the year sevens we followed the Hampshire Book Awards right. and we had a group of I think 20 year sevens who read the six uh, titles and I got multiple copies of those six books if you like um, and they just swapped them out every time they finished one they'd swapped with another year seven and we did it like that and we discussed all six books over a period of a couple of months so those that was the year sevens for the eights and nines we are, uh, we just read what we want to read sometimes within a genre so we might for one month say in October we might just read dark dark books they love dark books <laughs> we all pick a dark book and then we bring our books to the lunchtime meetings and we just talk about you know not everybody talks at once of course we take it in turns but we might say oh we've been really enjoying this one has anybody read any of this you know that kind of thing so unfortunately we're not reading one single book and discussing one single book it's just impossible with nearly Absolutely. 60 can't Absolutely. do it yeah, no. Sally, did you have your hand up or were you just clapping? Yeah, no. <laughs> I was just going to say, and Lou's just said that she, her groups have been reading the Hampshire Book Awards. So presumably you've got access to Hampshire School Library Service, um, which we don't have in Bristol. We, we don't have a school library service. So that would be one way of getting multiple copies in, I suppose. Um, alternatively, you could perhaps do a themed book group. So you could have books on football. So it might be that everybody's reading a book on football or everybody's reading a graphic novel. And then you get around that. You, you know, know what? Really... I do know that, um, sorry to interrupt here, but I do know that our Hampshire's School Library Service have supplied and been, uh, you know, have offered their their advice and their membership 
two schools that weren't in Hampshire that didn't have an SLS. So I think you... I think the best way to do that is to contact SLS UK. And what yeah. they do is that they put you in contact in with the closest SLS yeah. to to your county if you don't have one. Um, but yes, definitely they 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 go beyond borders these days. Um, but it's it, it's trying to make sure that that you get the closest one possible to you. So, but absolutely, schools library services. If you haven't already heard about them or using them, you should be. Um, it's certainly a way to get your hands on extra copies of books and and they certainly work well within book clubs i know that the guernsey schools library service for a while they were providing book club books so they would have sets of 10 that they would loan out so you know it differs from schools library service to schools library service obviously depending on funding but it's certainly worth asking without a doubt um sabrina just while you're there as far as supplying books for book clubs do you find that that is is it something that schools talk to bookshops about it's interesting you say that because our store um does actually work alongside um one of our grammar schools here and we've just done um, a big book reward thing over the summer where students come in they've been told they've got x amount that they can spend a book on and it will be presented them um at the beginning of the school year uh, and if they don't choose a book, they get a gift token, which uh, my boss spent several hours sorting out, which was quite interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. But we've been building up links with other librarians uh, in other schools in our town. And one's really excited. She's looking forward in coming in and going around and choosing books and all that. So I do think it depends on your local shop as to whether they can work with you or not. Mm -hmm. And if they can offer like discounts and that for you. So yeah. it might be worth asking um, your local bookshops and see what they can do for you as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's move on to our next question. What we generally tend to find, or in my experience, possibly, it tends to be the very keen readers that turn up to your book club, the ones that are reading anyway. Um, it does take a while to keep them engaged unless they just want to stick their nose in a book so you know I can remember running book clubs uh, from a position of a visiting librarian in a school um, the children in primary that I was was uh, working with tended to expect a game in amongst the book chat you know so we I would have to think of of book themed or word themed activities um, it do you find that that's what you are having to do or is it all just book and how do you I suppose a few questions together how do you engage those non-readers into your book club or or can we not can I go to Lou with that one uh yeah so I thought that um it would only be readers that joined book club and interestingly it hasn't been the case yes I've got top end readers of course but I have within those 60 um, a wide range of, of people and some of them are, are very very struggling readers interestingly um, I, I also thought that I would find that they would numbers would drop off as the year went by um, and that hasn't been the case if anything more and more people have wanted to join so You're obviously I'm kind of wondering, right. yeah obviously doing something right um, <laughs> So I think it helps that we 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 make our own bookmarks, we make our own badges, nice. um, and there's always things to win. There's always eye care points that you can get if you join, if you participate, if you you know um, things like that. So so house points, um, eye care points is what they're called in our school. Exclusive badges that are, that only people in the book club can can make and own, um, bookmarks that we design ourselves, um, exclusive um, kind of pre information on things that are happening in the school. So um, we things like we have a book fair every year, and it's my ink drinkers that get involved in helping to prepare for that and get mm -hmm. to choose the books that are bought to sell and all that kind of thing. Um, does that answer your question? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, so, 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 how do you share that 
um, within the session, do you always do an activity or is it is it uh, just randomly, I suppose? Lunch is so, so short. So yeah. by the time they've got in and their sandwiches are out and they're ready, we've got about 20 minutes. Right. So it's very unusual for me to do a game of any kind. It's more of a sitting around and, and trying to listen to as many people as possible individually tell me about their books and right. then tell tell them about the initiatives that are coming up or something fun like an author five video I want to show them or do you know what I mean? So I don't I don't have to think about games each week. It, so, they, so when do they make their bookmarks? Is that at the beginning of the year? Um that... no it can be any time during the year. Okay. Um we might we, we have to do it over a period of a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. Okay. I get them to make their design and then we then print them in-house which is quite lucky for us we have our own badge making machine as well so again they make their design and then we we make them with the, with the machine we print it off you know professionally we've got the pr program and everything and the and the machine um but that's uh, over a period of weeks so yeah okay. so does that run alongside your book discussions I suppose is what I'm trying to get to yeah I might sort of skip a week of chatting about books and we do a book a bookmark design or something which okay. then if we if we um if they're good enough they get rolled out to the whole school so they are mm -hmm. given out to all library lesson students so they kind of get a bit of kudos from yeah. I made that bookmark um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah no sounds good sounds good Sally can I bring you in yeah so um the Friday morning books at breakfast that we do obviously the first 10 minutes or so is just eating breakfast so we tend not to do <laughs> a craft activity then however previously I have run lunchtime book groups when I first started at the school and um, as Lou was saying lunch is such a short time and because they're staggered they're, they're every 20 minutes somebody else is another group is going off for lunch so what I tended to do then was I had a lunchtime book group which was just reading the books um, or talking about the book the second group was a library craft club so that's when we would make our bookmarks or fill in the templates that where you've got the bookshelf with all the blank book spines and you can fill that in the things that you've read things that you want to read um or we would have lollipop sticks and i'd given kind of cues on the lollipop sticks so they could talk about a favorite picture book they could they just gave little prompts of things that they could talk to one another as a in a group about yeah. books so they were kind of two separate groups just because lunch times are so fragmented really yeah, it is difficult these days isn't it's it it's really hard and it, it you know um all these bubbles and split lunches and things all came about in covid and it's kind of hung over from that so yeah. i can see you know we've got just got too many children to fit in one hall at the same time so i can see why we're staggered absolutely but it makes for things like book clubs really really hard to organize yeah so lunchtime clubs generally must be must be difficult for everybody not just book clubs I suppose. yeah as far as i'm aware we don't have i think they just have areas of the playground that are allocated for various children for sports but no clubs as such at lunchtime not in primary uh ruth do you want to come in yeah, that's exactly what I was just wondering about, because I'm sure when I was at school, it was a while ago pre-COVID, um, but I'm sure that there were after school clubs, but yeah. nobody, we don't run anything after school now. So every club that runs has to run really between Monday and Thursday and within a half hour slot. No club must start before half past one because otherwise the children can't eat. Every club must finish at two o'clock, otherwise they're late for four. Right. And so, you know, when you say you've got 60 kids coming, Lou, I think, yeah, well, I think I'd have 60 kids if I was, the, you know, if they weren't all also trying to play netball, be in the junior <laughs> choir, you know, learn to juggle, learn to crochet. And I I am sad, really, that we don't have more time for it because the opportunity to stay after school as a child, I would have loved that luxury of staying yeah. after school. So I'm just interested to know whether that's, is that a COVID hangover? Is that particular to our school? Lots of our kids have very long commutes, so I know that that's part of the thinking behind it. Or is that just, has it just fallen out of fashion? The idea of a breakfast is just lovely, even nicer. <laughs> what about what happens in your school, Lee? There are lots and lots of clubs, but funnily enough, most of them happen after school. Mm. So lunchtime, I'm not having to compete with that many other 
things that I'm aware of. There are stuff that goes on at lunchtimes, of course, but a lot of the other clubs come at three o'clock. Um, so I don't have that problem. So maybe if that was the case, I would lose quite a lot of people. I already do know that there are children who, who would like to come to book club, but can't because there's something else on. And I get that. Um, but yeah, a lot of them happen after school. Um, and I have mixed feelings about after school, if I'm honest with you. I know that for some children, it would be a really good thing that not all children want to go home straight away or it would benefit them in many, many ways. And I do, I do get that. But I also, part of me feels that students are coming into school from eight o'clock in the morning, um, lessons start at quarter to nine, but they're on, they're on from eight o'clock and come three o'clock in the afternoon, I feel that they need to just go home. <laughs> um, yeah. They need to switch off. Mm. And I know reading for us, for most of us, of course, is a way of switching off. But I, I wonder whether it's, I don't know, I just feel a bit mixed about that. I yeah. don't know. No, but I, 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 so yeah, I think I think you're right. Game. I think it's I think it's 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 finding where it works within the school day, but as as our lunch time is shortened, uh, it's it, these these kind of activities get very difficult to run. I suppose, don't they? Um, let's move on to Blue Peter. So, as I said earlier, they launched their new book club targeted at junior children. Why do you think? a high profile children's programme has decided to create a book club. And why do you think they've decided to do it now, I suppose is more of a, an interesting question. Lou, as the author, as the author here, <laughs> she's pulling a face. <laughs> Not a children's author. <laughs> no. Not a children's author. I was dreading you asking me this. I really don't know, but I mean, I don't mean this in a, negative way but I wonder if the government has had a hand in this okay oh we've got Am I allowed to again? say that <laughs> yeah of course Patience. you are of course I, you are it's what I thought yes is, is Blue Peter even still running though I mean uh... yes Blue Peter is yes let's, still, let, okay. let, let, let's bring let's bring Ruth in because she had a hand up first no oh, I can't hear you Ruth Sorry, I was going to say Sabrina had her hand up, but I'm on now. Um, I, do you know, it's very interesting because our head has been saying to me, every school is very anxious about reading, Ruth. What are we doing? You know, are we all the heads, every head locally is worrying about reading. Every head has got their eye on offset and they're watching out and they're, you know, have we got a reading champion or a reading leader or whatever it is in the school and the cynic in me thought oh there it is there's the reading framework been released in the summer there's all the schools getting anxious and the government thinking what can we do and their lovely B blue uh, blue peter and the bbc have stepped in and it's great you know the, the you know i know that's a cynical point of view but actually i kind of don't care all the reading, all the better. I can't believe it's taken Blue Peter so long to think <laughs> we could have a Blue Peter badge for reading. That seems like a no brainer to me. Um, so I'm the reasoning behind it, I suspect it is. I suspect it's all a government plot, um, but good on them and and let's run with it. Absolutely, absolutely. Serena, can I bring you in? Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> I think you have to be cynical about it. The timing, as you say, the reading framework came out in the summer. I watched the the storm go down on Twitter and Instagram and that, and everyone was talking about, oh, look, look, they, you know, they've done this reading framework. They forgot to mention librarians. How convenient. And then up comes Blue Peter. And, you know, and you're right, Ruth. I've been watching Blue Peter since I was very little. And they used to I think I was a teenager at the time they used to have like um, a thing in October where they talk about books for the half term and that was the only time that we talk about it but suddenly like you say there's a blue Peter badge I'm getting my L uh, my youngest to actually apply for one so we can have one <laughs> because I I want a blue Peter badge you know? <laughs> but it, it's it is cynical but if it works then kudos you know we need it uh, absolutely I I think I think you know this sudden uh urgency about around um 
literacy and reading is huge. And yes, why wouldn't someone like Blue Peter jump on the bandwagon? It's interesting, though, because it's not so long ago, they didn't they have a book award and that stopped. So that was pre um, any talk about stuff going on in schools were they already thinking about this this book club you know were they transitioning into into that it's difficult to tell isn't it um let me just tell you a very funny story i got a i got a tweet today um some school paid for, i'm i'm shocked 450 pound an hour for this literacy um at, uh, uh somebody who could advocate for literacy into their school and told them that they needed a child wonder literacy focused knowledge room. Do we not call that a library, a school library? <laughs> the world has gone mad. Okay, the world has gone mad. Um, do you know, so so we do need to make sure that the things like the Blue Peter um, book club is a good thing. Everybody loves Blue Peter. But school libraries need to jump on that bandwagon too. And they need to make sure that they're working with them as well as promoting what they do themselves. And I think these kind of discussions highlighting the impact that, that school librarians can make within a, the literacy and reading for pleasure uh, world is, is really important. So, so I'm not sure myself that I do know of any other high profile children's book um, clubs. Do any of you know any more other than the Blue Peter one that's out there? No, we're all shaking our heads. Uh, Sally, do you? Yeah, so just I was just going to come back to that first point. Um, oh, yeah. So we've had Sky Arts and BBC have had adult book clubs for some time on TV and there's been kind of industry noise for a long, long time, hasn't there, about the lack of children's reviews in the national press and the weekend press that kind of thing and lots of people have been calling for some kind of book club or book review program for children so it kind of fed in that but it does seem funny with the timing of the reading framework in the summer i, I will agree with that so um what i was thinking though with the the, the blue peter obviously has such a high profile that actually it we all know the brilliant books that are coming out and we can encourage our children to access those. But having Blue Peter on board is actually a really good way of getting parents, grandparents, other adults yeah, yeah. to find out perhaps names that they authors, books that they weren't previously aware of. So I think from that point of view, it's timely and it's a welcome thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then what was this? We were saying something else. We, oh, Just yes. Do you know, other, other do you know of any? Yeah. Chatterbooks. Okay. Libraries. Okay. Generation of children book groups. But I think, again, you would have to be an industry person to know. No, that's the yeah. difference. You might yes. access Chatterbooks if you were in your public library um, regularly. And I think parents would respect that as some kind of, it's got some kind of validation because it's taking place regularly in a public library. Yeah. But I'd, I'd heard of Chatterbooks long before I started working in, in school libraries for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So there are a few, but that's the difference, is that Blue Peter is high profile. It, it, it's so, higher than high profile, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. Ruth, can I bring you in? Yeah, just thinking about the age range of the Blue Peter Award, I don't know, but I was, I mean, even in the 80s when I was watching it, I was young, much younger than 15 before I stopped watching Blue Peter. And that's a massive age range as far as children's literature is concerned you know I think it, five to the top of primary is a big range but five to 15 is really quite something mm. I'm not quite sure you know it, 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 for me it slightly detracts from it because you're not going to get that breadth of nudge I, I'd be I'd be thinking about it twice if I was relying on that as my source of information because of the breadth. And how many 15 year olds, apart from those in a school where we're all going, oh my God, you can get a Blue Peter badge. How many of them would be interacting with it 
were it not for school libraries, if we're honest, you know, or, or English teachers who have decided that's going to be their thing this year. I can't imagine there are many people watching. Um, you know, TikTok is the is the only that's their book club, and the book talk is massive, absolutely yeah. massive, but entirely unregulated, and therefore, you know, something else in time. That is another conversation for yeah, another... it is, and not one I know anything about. So <laughs> I, I can say the words, and that's where I end. <laughs> let's bring let's bring Lou in. What, what were you going to say? No, I'm I, uh, I'm just going to just echo what Ruth said in that um, my head of English had said uh, sent me an email just a few days ago actually saying are you aware of this being the blue peter badge mm. um yes i am mm. i think we should do a big push on this i think it could be big i i can i've ignored it so far because i'm with you ruth in this i i cannot see even my year sevens going for it it's mm. not a cool thing it's it's cool to us adults because it's retro <laughs> it's her childhood <laughs> It's yeah. cool to primary school children because it's a badge. Yeah. But it's not cool, not not even to my really good high-end readers in year seven, I would say. So I'm not pushing it at all. I'm I'll mention it, I'll say, Are you aware of this? But I'm not going to be um running it or doing anything to do with it, unfortunately. And that sounds perhaps No, not, but I think I don't you... know, but I I honestly just don't think it's it's for the secondary school. I really don't. And maybe they just Maybe they just thought they had to, because to exclude it would be perhaps a bit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, sorry, my, my, my words have gone. That's <laughs> quite right. low. I'm going to right. myself again. Just yeah, Sabrina, right. let, let, <laughs> let me bring Sabrina in, and then I'll go to Sally. Um, what's interesting is we're talking about the age range of five to fifteen. Um, Blue Peter is obviously aimed at seven-year-olds up to about 13-year-olds that's their audience so that's why there is such a big age range which is like you say horrific because that's a huge range of reading ability and interests right in the middle there so that is one big problem Lou you're totally right secondary school kids do not watch Blue Peter anymore and if they do they do not admit to it they're on book talk and maybe that's where book clubs should be either getting their picks from or should be doing more of the whole actually let's do a, a social book club online through book talk um the the thing i noticed this morning was the ukla um they've just announced their long list for their awards and they have three age brackets so they've got the, the three to five the five to what was it nine i think and then it was nine to twelve and i was looking at what was in them and I thought, you know, there are certainly the two upper end age ranges are probably where the Blue Peter Book Award um, Book Club is going to pick from. But I was looking at those choices of those age groups and just looking at the range of books in them and thinking it's huge. You know, as librarians, you know, how do you decide what books to pick for reading as a group? Sorry, I've kind of rattled off there. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Absolutely right. Um, Sally, can I bring you back in? Yeah, just going back to that age thing, and um, I wouldn't even say that the cutoff is a year seven thing. I know that uh, from years of experience, Summer Reading Challenge, year six, you're on hiding to nothing. <laughs> it's a real struggle to get those year sixes for the Summer Reading Challenge. So I will imagine it's going to be exactly the same to get them involved with the Blue Peter, unless parents are encouraging them to do it. And I think that that's, you've hit the nail on the head. I think that it will be a parent pushing thing that they're hooking into because people of our age who are parents are quite keen to get blue peter badges it's um, that nostalgia thing and i know as a team at school all all of us adults want yeah blue, and we've just said it haven't we we all want a blue peter badge. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll give us one for doing this podcast <laughs> it gets you into a lot of places free it it's worth its weight in metal <laughs> So um, let's move on um, to another question. So, okay, so can we've almost touched on this a little bit. So can high pro profile book club suggestions be relevant to students? And I think I think we've we've covered that a little bit here, haven't we, already in the fact that um, you know, let's stay with Blue Peter. The range is huge. 
and I'm not sure how they're they're planning to give their suggestions. Uh, have has anybody looked at it more closely than I have, which is terrible that I'm going to talk. I'm talking about it, and I haven't actually looked. Um, are they are they you know dividing it into age groups, or are they just giving out random? I don't know. Ruth, do you know anything? Or Sabrina, do you know something? I, I had a look. Obviously, I went and checked it out to go and see how to get a Blue Peter badge, obviously. Um, but the information on their web page was actually quite limited. It was like, we're launching this book club. We're going to pick a book. Um, we're going to promote reading. And you can apply for a, a badge. And their main focus seemed to be the badge rather than the reading side of it. So I don't know if someone in the studio is going to come up with something. I mean, I might have to sit down and start watching Blue Peter again as an adult and see what they do. <laughs> what about you, Ruth? I think they're leaving it quite free form. Okay. Uh, my, the impression I got was it's more like a, a reading challenge. It's more like a, you read a book and here are some things that you could do. And when you've done them, demonstrate to us that you've done them and you'll get a, a badge for it so okay. i think it's book club in a in a you know in the sense it almost like lou's talking about we can't all read the same book so you decide what you've read tell us what you've done to expand that reading or to react to that reading in some way and then you can get a badge my impression is that isn't that it's not that it's not prescriptive in what they read and not even I didn't even come away with the clear impression that they were going to recommend anything or give you a selection to read from or anything like that okay. um, so in that way I think therefore the age thing is perhaps more easily dealt with because it's just anybody between these ages can participate and you participate by doing as you please you know reading whatever you please um so if that's the case, I suppose that is easier for them. They don't oh, have is it, to... So is it really a book club? Well, indeed. I mean, mm. I, but then I suppose that's not that different from the way we would run our book clubs. We might say we haven't got enough books to read. The way we run our year seven reading lessons is by genre. So we say we can't all read the same book. So your genre is friends and family or world wars or whatever. You read in that genre and you discuss how your book discusses that theme and contributes to that theme. Um, the assessment is that discussion. But for them, the assessment is, you know, write a make a bookmark, make a whatever it is. And that's your contribution. So it's a book club in that if, in order to be in it, you've got to know, be doing things with books. Maybe that's there's nothing more to it than that. Sally, can I bring you back in? Yeah, so when I had a look at the website, there were some suggested reads on there. And some of them I thought were great recommendations, actually. I was quite happy to see some of those books on there. But there is a thing on there that says it doesn't have to be one of these half a dozen books. You can read whatever you like. So from that, I'm kind of interpreting, I'm almost thinking of it along the lines of the Summer Reading Challenge, more of a yeah, challenge so in a club. Yeah. yeah. There's quite a lot of uh, freedom to, if you don't fancy those six, pick something of your own choice. Yeah. Lou, can I bring you in? Yeah, just one final thing that I would say is as a positive about the Blue Peter, even if I'm not going to do anything with it, even if we don't think it's going to be relevant for children of a certain age, I still think that it's a good thing in the in the in the sense that adults and they are predominantly the people who are buying the books here. We have to remember that it's not the children buying the books. It's the adults, isn't it? Um, it's a way for them to see what's what's new and what's actually out there at the moment. Anyone who doesn't work in publishing or libraries hasn't got the faintest diddly squat what's out there in terms of children's literature. They really don't, unless they can actually physically go into a Waterstones or an independent bookshop and have a browse, they really don't know. And they're just, you know, a lot of adults are just, stuck in the past <laughs> and think that children are still reading Enid Blyton and still reading you know Roald Dahl and and actually no there's they're not they're reading authors that they would have never heard of before yeah. so I think that that Blue Peter in that sense is good if it's if it's giving suggestions that 
that adults are looking at on the on the website and then going away and ordering and buying that's a good a good thing absolutely sabrina can i bring you in i'm totally going to agree with lou here you know the the people who are asking me for help in choosing the next books for their children to read it's mum and dad who are coming to me i mean i will talk to the child because obviously at the end of the day they're the ones who are going to be cho- um, reading the book but they haven't got a clue they're like oh well, we know Harry Potter and it's like naming someone under the age of 30 who doesn't know Harry Potter. You know, <laughs> they know David Walliams because he's always churned something out and he's always on offer. They'll know Ina Blyton, like you say, because they've grown up reading Ina Blyton. You know, it, it's amazing how few even popular authors from the last like decade, like Mallory Blackman, um, even Judy Bloom and all that and Jacqueline Wilson, they're not known by parents. And mm. that's quite scary. And I'm wondering, like you say, if Blue Peter are promoting books from a wider um, author range, then maybe parents will suddenly realise, actually, there is, like you say, hundreds of fantastic books out there that they've never even heard of. And if it gives exposure to some really good stories mm-hmm. from diverse authors, um, then that's that's a bonus, if nothing else. Because, you know, as um, so many um, authors and that on Twitter are saying, children's books are not promoted in like the the bestseller list you don't see children book reviews in newspapers or frequently talked about on uh, websites and that so where do parents get their information from it's from those you know supermarket stacks of books and it's the same authors every time you walk in so if nothing else if this promotes a wider diversity of reading then it's great absolutely Right, I've just noticed the time. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do a quick promotion. Um, I want to introduce Engaging and Empowering School Libraries, a transformative training membership designed exclusively for innovative school librarians and teachers. If you're an educator or school with a shared passion for fostering collaboration between teachers and librarians across all subjects, then I extend a warm invitation for you to join me on this remarkable journey. My mission is simple yet powerful, to empower school librarians and teachers through comprehensive training and unwavering support. By equipping them with the necessary tools and knowledge, I aim to enhance independent learning, elevate literacy levels, and nurture overall student well-being through the incredible resource that is your school library. By joining my community, you'll embark on an exciting adventure alongside like-minded individuals who are equally committed to educational excellence. Together, we'll explore a unique learning experience that embraces innovation and encourages the growth of your students. So for more information about this extraordinary opportunity, please visit the link provided in the show notes below. And don't miss out on the chance to be part of this empowering initiative. So thanks for that bit. Um, My final question is to all of you. So as a school librarian, Um, what advice or recommendation would you give to other librarians or educators looking to leverage book clubs or high profile book clubs as a means to promote a love of reading and literacy among children? Are there any best practices you've discovered through your own experiences? So let's start with Sally for her final question. (laughs) I was hoping you weren't going to come to me. (laughs) (laughs) I always choose the wrong person. Um, so I would say um, before starting your own book club, think about is it a reading for pleasure thing? Is that or what is your purpose for your your group? And think about your budgets, how you're going to source those books and reading materials. Are they books that you've already got, or are you going to have to somehow raise funds, or how are you going to obtain those books? And as we've already discussed, those time constraints. So Chatterbooks recommend at least forty minutes for their book group sessions per week or was it or per month per month I think there's is um but if you've got 20 minutes in a lunch time how much can you realistically achieve in that 20 minutes um what are your goals is it to raise the reading for pleasure ethos in your school or is it an inclusivity thing and with the thing with something like blue peter and those children are making their own book choices um are they being exposed to a whole variety of new and diverse writers? Fantastic. Oh, thank you very much, Sally. Um, Lou, what about you? It's a difficult question to answer. <laughs> Years now, and you'd think it would be easy, wouldn't you? But I don't know. 
um, as much as possible, make it welcoming. So make sure it's in a really the best place that you can find. The library obviously is the best place, but, um, you know, try and make it comfortable and welcoming, warm, friendly um, as uh and, and also I find that if I can get the students to take ownership of it in some way, so they helped with the naming of it, they voted on the name of it uh, originally when it was originally started. Um, and, and I asked them week by week, next week we'll do this, what do you think? Have you got any ideas? And they'll give their, their thoughts as to what we should do in the weeks to come. So I think letting the students have some ownership. You're completely right, Sally. Knowing what it's for, knowing what the purpose of it for, really helps to keep your keep you steering in the right direction so mine is absolutely reading for pleasure nothing to do with school texts nothing to do with being assessed in any way shape or form i don't care what they read um i do care but you know <laughs> they can read whatever <laughs> they like if they bring a stephen king in they bring a stephen king in that's their choice um it's giving them ownership of it and showing and also showing through your own passion and your own love of literature, not forcing it on them. Just everything you talk about, everything, you, you know, you bring your own books in from home that you're reading. You talk about what you've been reading at, at home or films that you've watched that used to be a book or that kind of thing. And your own passion comes through and they just they just run with it. I find they just that I know it's not very good advice, but that <laughs> it's seems to be what I do. And it seems advice. to work. <laughs> I absolutely agree that that passion for reading comes from being a passionate reader and, and actually being able to share that joy and love and annoyance and and um, laughter from reading is, is such a such a skill that is often overlooked. Um, so so absolutely, you know, it's it's a it's I, we, you have to be passionate about reading in order to be able to run a, a book club in my opinion and um, Ruth do you have any final words that you'd like to say Lou I think you're underselling yourself you've missed something really important that you do and that is give things away make this like the book club that was always the most popular was the one where one of our year 12 students used to bake she loved baking, but she didn't like eating what she baked every week because she didn't need all of that food. So she would bake every week brownies, biscuits, cakes, whatever it was. I cannot afford out of their out of our budget to be feeding biscuits, but badges, you know, things that make them feel like they're part of something. They love that. And if you can provide food. I mean, it seems to me kids will go anywhere if you write there are biscuits or there <laughs> might be pizza. <laughs> They're like, oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, I entirely agree. It's it, it's about them feeling comfortable and relaxed. And while we have a particular demographic in our school, so some of the students would opt for a book club where they are challenged, where it's more academic, that's their kind of pleasure. Um, so it's finding what works in your school. Um, and in a way, that's partly, it seems to me, what Sally's doing with the pupil premium students is giving them something special. It's making them feel part of that group, even if they're not natural book club people. I mean, the, the pleasure of being able to give those kids a book every term is just that's such a lovely thing. And they get to choose and oh, makes me feel quite warm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Ruth and Sabrina do you would you like to have some final words I'm just going to say you three librarians are absolutely fantastic and everything you said is spot on and it highlights completely why we need librarians because you guys are passionate about reading and as Elizabeth says if you're not passionate you can't share reading it just it doesn't happen so the fact that you three are so passionate about it and doing all this work and encouraging all these students, I am so impressed and in awe that you guys are doing this. So yeah, you. <laughs> thank you so much. So thank you all for joining me today. Sally, Lou, Sabrina and Ruth. I, I have had such a ball talking to you all this evening. You know, the fact that we've, we've covered so much and hopefully given 
a few ideas to people that may be uh, uh, embarking on their first ever book club. Hopefully they will be, you know, take a few ideas away from tonight's discussion. Um, any tools or anything that we've talked about in the uh, tonight's episode will be in the show notes below. And as always, if you'd like to comment on anything you've heard today, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to, to, to subscribe to our podcast um, so you don't miss out on any future discussions. Thank you for listening and good night.